Hello, welcome to this video demonstrating how to value a company using the price multiples methodology. The aim of this video is for me just to go through a price multiples example. I'm going to do it in Excel. I'm not going to talk too much about the theory of it. I'm just going to apply the price multiples to our company of choice, which is Australian Vintage Limited. So here I've gone to the database data analysis premium and I've looked up Australian Vintage Limited. I've identified the fact that they're in the gig sector, consumer staples, and their industry is the beverages industry. So within this database, I've gone into the financial search tool and I've decided to search for other companies that are in the beverage industry. And I'm looking for just a couple of the key financial pieces of data, including their equity, revenues, profits, those kind of things. So I can calculate a few ratios, which is then going to allow me to apply the price multiples methodology to value Australian Vintage Limited. So I download this data and I've got it in a spreadsheet here and I've downloaded the data for all the companies in the Australian uh, Australian Stock Exchange that are listed in the beverage industry here. So we've got a list of nine companies which are producing beverages and I've ordered them by market cap. So Coca-Cola Amatil is the biggest, followed by Treasury Wine Estates and then the company we're interested in, Australian Vintage Limited. I've downloaded their equity, so from the balance sheet, operating revenue, so their sales revenue, their net profits, so this is from your profit and loss or income statement, then the market capitalization, your share price times the number of shares or the overall value of your company on the stock market. So I've got this data downloaded from our financial statements and the market caps from the stock market. The next thing I want to do is I want to calculate some ratios for these firms. So I've decided to calculate three ratios, price to earnings ratio, price to sales ratio, and the price to book ratio. When you're trying to value a company using the price multiples, there is no best ratio to use, but these are three of the common multiples that you'll often see. So I'm going to calculate the price to earnings ratio here. I'm going to say the price refers to the market capitalization. How much would I have to pay to buy the whole company? So for Coke Amatil here, it's about 9.3 billion. So the price divided by the earnings. And when I talk about the earnings, I'm going to be meaning my net profit, my reported net profit after tax here. I divide through here. The price to sales ratio, market cap divided by my sales revenue. And the price to book ratio is the market capitalization divided by the book value of equity. So this is market capitalization is how much the company costs on the stock market. The book value of equity from the balance sheet is how much the equity position on your balance sheet records. So I've calculated these ratios and I'm going to drag it down for all the companies there. So I have these nine companies and I've calculated three ratios as an example. And what I'm going to be trying to do is I know the value of Australian Vintage, their market capitalization, but I may be worried that that's wrong or it's not valued correctly. And I might want to use price multiples as a way of testing the valuation. So I'm going to calculate an average. So I'm calculating the average for the P ratio here. I'm going to drag that across for the price to sales and price to book ratios. Okay, so straight up for the P ratio and price to sales ratio averages, I can see I'm getting an error in Excel. And it's because this company, Top Shelf International, don't have any revenue in the recent period. So it's mucking up my calculation here. So I'm going to say to calculate a price multiple, we either use an industry average or we look at our closest competitors. And I don't think this company is very similar to Australian Vintage Limited because this company is not even generating any revenue yet. So I'm going to delete these guys. Okay, I don't think they're a good comparable company to value Australian Vintage, so I'm going to delete them. Okay, so now I have my industry averages and my price to earnings ratio. I've got an average of minus nine. That means most beverage companies seem to be making a loss. And as I look through their reported net profit, I can see that these bottom five, the smallest, sorry, this, these smallest five companies are all making losses. So it's skewing my average. So I want to value Australian Vintage, which are a pretty, pretty well established wine manufacturer. And I'm comparing it to these other companies that I've, I've not heard of any of these companies. I don't know anything about them, but they're in the same industry. So according to price multiples, it might be an appropriate thing to look at. Then I'm saying, okay, they're making a loss it's really skewing the averages. So maybe these ones here are not very appropriate for my analysis either. 
So I might get rid of these. These might not be very comparable companies. Now, because I want to value Australian Vintage, I don't want their PE ratio in my average. Now I've got two companies left, Coca-Cola and Treasury Wine Estates. Is Coca-Cola similar to Australian Vintage? Well, both companies sell beverages. But Coca-Cola, where they're selling the industry or the actual market they're operating in, is very different to the wine market. So Coca-Cola's PE ratio may not be very helpful in valuing Australian Vintage. So I might get rid of that because they're selling very different products. Okay. Now I'm left with one company, Treasury Wines Estate. They're a significantly larger operation. Their revenues are about 10 times more. And we've got this PE ratio of 26. Okay, so if I wanted to use the price multiples method, I could have taken the industry average, which was a negative, but that didn't make sense. So I deleted some of those loss-making companies. Then I saw which companies were left. I said, oh, Coca-Cola is not very similar to Australian Vintage, so I might remove that one. I'm just going to compare it to my closest competitor, which is Treasury Wines. And I'd say, okay, if Australian Vintage Limited is similar to Treasury Wines, I could calculate the Australian Vintage Limited Estimated Equity, and I would say it's going to be equal to 26.14 times their net profit. And then just to make it a little bit neater, that would estimate, based on a comparable, if Australian Vintage Limited had the same PE ratio as Treasury Wines Estate, Australian Vintage Limited would be worth $286 million. However, currently they're only worth 165. So based on this analysis, this price multiple, we would expect the Australian Vintage Limited share price to increase. However, remember, we've just completed this price multiples in a couple of minutes. It was very quick, it was very easy. However, it's going to be inaccurate. Treasury Wines and Australian Vintage may have significant differences in their businesses. But because price multiples are just a quick and dirty way of doing things, it's just a starting point. Okay. We could also put in the argument that maybe Treasury Wines is overvalued. Maybe Treasury Wines only deserve to have a PE ratio of 15. Maybe their market capitalization is too high. Without understanding the businesses and their competitive advantages, it's very hard to understand the valuation based on a comparable. We can then do a similar thing for the price to sales or price to book ratio. Uh, I'm going to do it for both of them just to show you the variance between the different ratios you can get. So price to sales ratio. Um, these, these smaller companies do have revenues. So maybe I can keep them in this time. Lark Distilling Co. have a very high price to sales revenue. It's a bit of an outlier here. But let's, let's apply the same thing. So for Australian Vintage Limited's estimate, I'm going to remove their ratio because I don't want their own ratio to bias it. And I'm going to say the industry average of 4.6 times Australian Vintage's operating revenue, and then we'll format it. This would value the company at $1.2 billion, which is very, very different to this ratio. And then we'll do it again for the price to book ratio. And we'll say the industry average is 0.6, and I'll multiply the industry average of 0.6 by the total equity account of Australian Vintage. Okay, and we get this time. 183 million. So we have three very different valuations here by price multiples, depending on which ratio I've used, depending on which competitors or comparable firms I've used. Here, when I look at the price to sales ratio, I might say, oh, this one's a um, bit of an outlier. Maybe Lark Distilling Company are very different to Australian Vintage. Maybe I should delete them and it decreases the uh, valuation a lot. If I say, okay, maybe all of these small firms shouldn't be included, the valuation drops. Price multiples, we've just come up with a range of different valuations for Australian Vintage Limited based on the price to earnings ratio, the price to sales ratio, and the price to book ratio. It was quick and easy in that I could quickly download some data. I didn't have to do any forecasting or accounting analysis or understand the business or the industry at all, and I've come up with these valuations. However, the variation between these three valuations makes them almost useless. If you're buying something for 180 million, it's very different to buying it for 590 million. Okay, so that's an example of how you can apply price multiples to a company like Australian Vintage Limited to get a rough estimate of their price. Thank you.